Here is the Bitcoin chart you requested. For the day, Bitcoin is essentially unchanged. Take note of the pleasant curvature you possessed. I have remained perfectly still while this chart has been rising. Yes, I did warn you a few days ago that we would be entering opposition and I wanted to. Make sure you are prepared. Bullish attitude and criticism of banking leaders will propel Bitcoin to $350,000 by August 2024, according to Robert Kosaki. Despite the speculative nature of his prognosis, Kosaki is confident and keeps buying Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, expecting their prices to climb significantly. He stresses the importance of diversifying cryptocurrency holdings and the possibility for large returns. After Elon Musk's deepfake, insurers started to see Bitcoin for what it is a mainstream asset. In the context of Bitcoin's mainstream adoption, this scam emphasizes the need of insurers engaging properly. Insurers should provide insurance to safeguard digital identities, uh, opening up chances for profitable contracts as the risk landscape is rapidly evolving owing to new forms of fraud such as deepfakes. The need for insurers to evolve and safeguard digital assets in the modern day is highlighted by this occurrence. This downsloping line is brief in what you basically have is this pivot top as well as the all-time high here connected to this high and this high. Length of time. Right now, there isn't a lot of opposition. I wouldn't call this a huge barrier to entry, but it is a level. That might temporarily hold prices in check. This is okay, I suppose, if you're a bull. Sure, nobody likes it when they encounter resistance, but that's just how trading and investing work. Consequently, you should aim for a brief period of bullish consolidation from this level. Two or three days is the bear. Minimum, I'm willing to say. If that is achieved, it bodes well for a robust upward breakout and a potential test of 74,000. Now, we'll discuss the bear case if you hold the bearish view of Bitcoin. The bear's desires are unclear. A strong rejection of this level would satisfy the bears who are hoping for a return to this support level. Once you return to that level, the bears will likely aim for a daily close below it, which may trigger a chain reaction that could send prices plunging as low as 52,000. Okay, so I'll give you my two cents on the matter and you can decide which one is right in the end. As far as probability go, the bulls are still in charge of this chart, but that's just basic technical analysis. Additionally, as a chart technician, it is best to consider all angles before deciding whether or not to trade a certain situation. Making a trade isn't necessary. Everyone should keep in mind that waiting for a better arrangement is quite acceptable. In fact, it's the preferred option. Okay, everyone, I've attached a Solana chart for you. The Solana family is still. From a purely chopping perspective, it has had a small increase. Nevertheless, the current situation is reminiscent of when you formed a sideways channel, broke above it, and then broke below it. Here we have a series of lows, and we have also reached a high. Thus, this area represents resistance. This white trend line will serve as support in the event of a decline. If you break below here, you will likely return to 120 right here. That which is what bears on Solana's side are hoping for. Proponents of higher prices want us to break through the 200-day moving average, which is near the all-time high and serves as an upper boundary. Then, everything will be set in motion if this can be broken up here and the all-time highs are broken. Frankly, there isn't much of a bias here in terms of the probability of bias. This one is neutral. Solana is mostly agnostic in contrast to Bitcoin, which is favoring bulls. Hanging out is all it is. It's quite biased in one direction or the other, but it's not even sending me information about probability. All right, let's move on to gold now. We will discuss the likelihood of future gold price movements. Furthermore, gold essentially keeps on ticking along. The pattern is as follows. It drops one day and then rises the next. We can observe a pattern of red, green, red, green today. It was somewhat higher, but it has since recovered and is remaining stable. Just so we're clear, this is still a bearish chart if you're seeking short-term probabilities. It remains a bullish chart in the medium to long term because it has broken out. Additionally, it is crucial to note that charts might have a negative bias in the short term and a bullish bias in the long or intermediate period or vice versa. Do you agree? Depending on their outlook, they could be bullish in the near term and negative in the medium term. Therefore, recognize that timeline is important. What do we see when we examine this chart? Basically, we also have a line that runs parallel to the lows in this spot. Do you agree? Ah, uh, so you've decided to consolidate. Right now, this chart is showing a bearish trend in the short term, and we are continuing to follow this typical bearish pattern of consolidation. Very well, here we may see the SP500's pre-market movement. When we step back and look at the big picture, we can see that it's really not very volatile. 
It appears volatile when viewed up close, yet that is not the case. Sure, we have the jobless claims data, but... What does that matter to investors and traders anyway? So I'm guessing today's volume will be a bit lower. Tomorrow's scheduled release of the unemployment data and non-farm payrolls we closed yesterday in this exact spot. In essence, how does it appear? What about a sideways chop? Honestly, there isn't a huge slant here. The stock price of NVIDIA has risen by almost 1% today. The good news is that NVIDIA is now selling at a price that would put it over the critical threshold that would make it the most valuable business in the world. In terms of market capitalization, and once again, that will surpass Microsoft. It overtook Apple yesterday, and it will most certainly overtake Microsoft today if it maintains its current position. It has risen tremendously quickly compared to where it was a year or two ago. Among the numerous semiconductor manufacturers, it was. 1. The market cap in the U.S. has now soared to its highest point. All right, then the action begins. As you can see, the number of people claiming unemployment did fall slightly. To round things off, the markets had anticipated a figure of 220,000. This group includes those who have recently applied for unemployment benefits. A total of 229,000 were recorded. Thus, it's not a major omission. It's not a dramatically increased figure, but it does hint at a possible trend shift. What am I trying to say with this? Just two months ago, the figures were pretty much in the middle, hovering. Around 215 and 205. Okay, so we noticed it was 231 a few weeks ago, then it dropped to 220, and now it's back to 229. In the near term, there is clearly a modest general increase in these figures. I would not be surprised if this keeps going up as long as the economy as a whole keeps getting worse. Absolutely, let's do it all over again. Some background on the data that came out this morning. As we can see, the effect is quite little. I would like to quickly review the 10-year yield, though. For five days in a row, the 10-year yield was lower. Numbered from 1 to 5. There was a modest uptick today. And the yield side may have seen some short covering before tomorrow's jobs report. In my opinion, the overall picture is this larger wedge design. I won't go into detail about where it begins, but I think you get the idea. Price stays put until it's pushed to break out, which might go either way. And it definitely malfunctioned in this instance. So what does this imply generally? You have your shortable level at this point, so you can do anything you want with it. That would mean going back to where it all started, the point where a leg lower broke down and my price goal is still set. At 3.9% for the 10-year yield. Most people see this and assume that interest rates will return to COVID levels of 2%, 1%, or even zero as soon as the economy weakens. I find that hard to believe. Because inflation will persist in the long run, I predict that 10-year interest rates will be sticky, hovering around 3% to 4%. I made a bold prediction when we were at 9% will drop to 3%, give or take, but things will get sticky around. That mark, everyone laughed at me when I said that. What transpired? Yes, that is precisely what transpired. Once again, it was solely up to me to make the connections. Examining the data is all it really boils down to. Comprehending prior events, such as those in the 1970s, and the outcomes they produced, and finally arriving at the most likely scenario?